All right, I have a game here that is so dead, it's a pile of dry bones. Literally speaking, I don't think, I didn't hear of this one before you ever heard of it. If you did, um, you're not extremely lucky. This is, uh, <laughs> this is Fantasy Wargaming by Bruce Galloway, published in 1981 or 1982. So it predates Red Box D&D by like one or two years, depending which published date is accurate. I mean that. Actually, let me go look, show you this first. This is actually, it's called Fantasy Wargaming. It is a role-playing book. Here's the publishing pa uh, uh, page, by the way. You can pause that and make sense of that. So it was produced in one year in the United States, but published it the following year? Whatever. But anyway, this book, um, it's actually a pretty good book. But back in the day when this was created, Fantasy Wargaming was certain gaming clicks alternate terminology for role-playing. At that time, most of gaming was actually involved in historical wargaming, and role-playing was a new thing. After all, this predates the Red Box by a year or two. So what we have here is definitely a product of a time. I um, have not read through it entirely. I've read through enough of this that I know about the book. Um, I never really even used it. It's just part of my collection. It was gifted me by a friend about 10, 12 years ago. And the thing is, is that it's a, uh, it's a nice little piece of game history as far as I'm concerned. You see, he takes the strong approach that a lot of people are saying no to fantasy wargaming. So he's producing a fantasy wargaming book um, the way a historical wargamer would look at it. Now, funny thing of all funny things is that it's, it's a role-playing book. This is about role-playing, really. But the terminology was a bit different and undecided back then. Here we have, um, it's just a normal brown book with a dust jacket. See, it's got the, kind of like some normal stamping on the side. The dust jacket is um, in relatively good condition. Here's the uh, little dust jacket for you. There you go. So this book is written in prose. It's all black and white. It's like an old, uh, you know, 70s, 80s style novel. Um, it's is mostly the front half is mostly just prose and he talks a lot about how okay if, if role playing doesn't make sense to you like a fantasy war game doesn't make sense to you here's how we make it make sense this guy is very big on setting and character reasons he does he has a lot of very advanced thoughts that were probably ignored during his age you might say um he's got an entire section on like how religion fits into things how culture fits into things he doesn't, um, he isn't very uh, considerate as far as niceties or correctness is concerned. He just says things like they are. And he often references to older cultures too. Most of it is just black and white text. You have a few interesting things like here we have this uh, weird picture of what looks like Jesus about getting to be knocked in the back of the head by, I don't know, that, that, that weird guy from Flight of Dragons. He looks like, I don't know, something. But... Uh, so there's like the occasional black and white art fronts piece. But that's about as far as you're going to get. Um, farther back you go, you get old school charts that, you know, you could type up and, you know, put in the typesetting as opposed to there's a bit more uh, black and white art there. Yeah, they're having some kind of nightly fight. Um, it's from what I've seen, it's pretty much percentile based or you're rolling a D6 or 2D6. Um, it's written prose. There's no like consistent, this is how you play the game. See, nowadays, we have things so smoothed out, you know, you, you, this is awkwardly old school by comparison. Electric. The, uh, from what I've gathered, yeah, he's got uh, entire pages devoted to charts. This was actually a thing in the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons rulebook too, so for anybody who's into old school gaming, this is not, nothing new. Um, in the back, there's a bestiary that got my attention because of how strange the bestiary is. Let me move there. The bestiary has things that are out of heraldry and out of myth. It's not like a fantasy monster. There are a few things in there that are relatively fantastic, but for the most part, it's uh, based off of either myth or off of heraldry. And it's just... It's got the statistics he has written up for his system. He does have a complete RPG system in here. But for the most part, it's a, uh, you know, it's just a fun little thing. Um, there's a, yeah, here's another thing in black and white art. 
it's kind of funny you got some poor guy running away from those beasties. Like, excuse me, it looks like you've been bitten. Oh, thanks, I've just noticed. You know, just fun stuff like that. The uh, overall, um, this is this is a piece of history. This I wouldn't even say it's a game system. I don't ever heard of anybody who played it. It came to me out of nowhere. Um, I'm pretty sure that if I looked through, I could find a way to make it playable. I didn't see a character sheet in here. So I don't know that there's a character sheet existing. I think you just write up some paper and call it good. Um, this came from a different time where the role playing was less about like having good combos for your character or you know showing how cool you could be in a role playing game. And it was more about just getting together and having fun with some friends. Um, with, uh, of course, probably you know, intellectually based friends, because back then normies didn't do role playing, um, which nowadays it's very common. Uh, looking at it, it's uh, I, his approach is definitely a product of his time. He approaches it as in fantasy wargaming versus historical wargaming. Of course, what it really is, coming down to it, it's an argument between role playing versus historical wargaming. So it's one of those things. And of course, historical war gamers still do historical war games things. Um, he does include a lot of references back to the historical, back to the mythical. He definitely taught, in fact, his magic system is based on um, one, religion, two, things he knows about demonology. And by the way, it's kind of a hard read for those who are, uh, who are not, you know, occultly inclined. So he actually does include occultism in here. Oh my. But it's it's occultism that you know makes sense for a setting that's relatively historical. Um, a lot of uh, touching on myth and legend, and he likes to he he really likes the idea of having cultural background to a role playing setting. So all in all, I think um, it's not a bad book. It's a good book just to down and read and, and understand how um, role playing or gaming in general was before Dungeons and Dragons became popular. But this is uh, late to the game by about, you know, seven or eight years as far as actual D&D &D being available. Um, but still, if you find a copy, you may or may not want to pick it up. If you're not into history, um, I mean, it, it has a nice old historical look to it. It's not modern in any way, shape, or form, um, even though it was printed within our lifetimes. The, uh, what else can I say? It's a, a relatively dry product from a previous slower, drier age. And very little we have in the modern age has anything similar to that, other than the fact that it is also a role-playing game. So that is uh, Fantasy Wargaming by Bruce Galloway. And it's, it's not going to see play anytime soon. I think everybody who, who role-plays... And everybody who does um, fantasy wargaming has a whole different thing they're into than this book even covers. So, in any case, uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully you have a, you have a good time gaming.